What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. That's all of a sudden, at age, what, 60? He's just going to break bad? Yes, sir. You Love India steps up in the building today to chop it up with the lockout men. She stops by to tell us why she stopped training. What happened, You Love India? No more wasting time. Let's get it. Now, hold on. What's I'm good? Okay. <laughs> What's good with you? You love India, man. We gotta. Well, I, I'm okay. listen, listen. I'm I'm not going to take too much of your time. You know, I, I I know we got a lot, a lot to catch up. But um, you, you know, you you you've been in the game for about four what four years now, right? Yes. And you decided to uh, you decided to train. And you know, listen, listen. I, I'm I'm kind of glad that you know you're you're not one of those drivers that was talked into training like after six months or a year. You at least wanted to make sure that you had a good grasp on what you want to get out there versus the blind leading the blind, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. So, India, I, I, of course, I seen your video because you know I follow you. You know, guys, go make sure you follow. You love India. Uh, <laughs> the first, <laughs> the first one was kind of, the first one was kind of uh, tumultuous. There, what, what, take us back. What, what happened with uh, with with your first training? Oh my God. <laughs> uh, my first trainee, well, I don't know, it was a lot of issues um, with her. Um, the main issue was the language barrier. She did speak Spanish as the first language. So I feel like the language barrier was um, the issue. Um, I also felt like it was an age issue because she was definitely older than me. And, you know, some people that are older, they don't, you know, care to take directions from someone that is younger. So I feel like that was another issue and um, not wanting to pay attention. And some people are so stuck on the things that they've learned in training and took to school, and they don't realize that those are just the basics. And, you know, you have to switch things up when you get out here in the real world. So, you know, the backing that you guys do in city of school is not the same. You're not parking in between no cones. You know, you're not backing with no big old range of space. Sometimes you have to blindside on the side, you know, of a building to get to that dock. And mm -hmm. you got to apply, you know, those skills. So. So do you. Do I you think it was just mental communication. Do, do you feel that she was intimidated by you because of your youth? What you say? Intimidated, intimidated by me because of what now? You Do you feel that she was intimidated by you because of your youth? Because you was younger than her? 
I mean, maybe, but I don't feel like that should, you know, if you come into this industry, especially if you're coming in whatever age that you're coming in, if it's somebody that's training you, I mean, the most you can do is pay attention. Like, at that point, age don't even matter. You're here to learn a job. I mean, unless in any field, you can be doing cashier work. Whatever it is that you're learning, obviously, it's a new trade for you. So you have to learn it. It shouldn't matter who's teaching it to you. So India, what 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 was it that that you that you felt that broke the camel's back between uh between you and your first trainee because it was a lot that was going on. I mean, well, I, for one, I feel like it was a lot of disrespect, like the loud talking and the you know the over talking me and telling me what you're not gonna do and trying to run my truck like it's your truck. And trying to tell me what what the rules is and telling me how to do my job. So that was that's really what broke, you know, the icing on the cake because I like I'm easy going. I don't do drama. You know, I don't got time for that. And that's another reason why I was like, you know what, I'm done with the training because I can't be out here making enemies with drivers and stuff like that or somebody mad because they got kicked off my truck or you know they mad because I didn't pass them and then. A month later, two months later, I see you out in the field out. Now it's tension, and I ain't trying to update my mug shot. <laughs> my girl said, I'm not trying and, uh, to update I, my I, mug I, shot. <laughs> I'm not trying to update my mug shot. So. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Um, of course, you, you know, of course, you're down in uh, Miami, Florida. Uh, that's one of the areas where I normally come down. Not not too far. Only been in Miami maybe once or twice this year. But um, but before we get into the to to you know the hurricane and how that affected you, um, a lot of a uh, a a lot of uh, Spanish speaking uh people are in Miami. So you said the language barrier was was a, a huge issue in that? Yes, because I was giving instructions and stuff, and it's like she didn't understand. Of course, she couldn't even understand certain parts of the truck, like the tandems and stuff. And I'm just like, well, how did you pass truck in school? Like, and that's another thing I realized that, you know, a lot of these schools, it is a money grab. They are not actually in the business you know, to make sure that you learn. Even if it's just the basics, they are not there to make sure that you learn the basics. They are there to make their money, and if you don't get it on your own within that time, then, you know, that's on you. Because the school I went to, I went to China for three months, and it was only 10 students in the class, and it was five trucks, so two people to a truck. Whoever you was paired with in the beginning of that training, you would put that person throughout the whole you know, three months of training together. So you and this person are creating a bond. Y'all both learning together. You showing me ways that you're learning how to get this back in. I'm showing you ways and techniques that, you know, I'm learning how to get this back in. And we doing it constantly for three months. So it's not no such thing as, oh, you know, we've been out here for six weeks and we only got the back three times because they get 20 or 30 people in the class, you know, to get this money. And they're not really giving these people enough time to learn the technique with just the basics. So I really thought the school, the CDL schools with the minimum training that they are giving these people that's coming into this industry. Like a lot of people feel like this industry is just that easy and it's really not. And trucking has become very, very glamorized. And maybe right. I take some part of that because, you know, when I post the, you know, it looks like it's easy. Not everybody sees the downside of trucking and how dangerous it is and some of the things that we actually go through in the industry. Not India. What what about uh what what about that? The again, I'm 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 circling around back to the language barrier. And you you exactly right that these uh trucking schools out here, they're they're they only giving you the bare minimum, they only training you enough just to pass to get your CDLs. But what about these but but what about these foreigners? And I wanna say foreigners because they are, you know, well maybe they was born here. But if they was born here, you would know that they would speak the English language. What about these what, what mm -hmm. about what about these foreigners that use that as an excuse? 
Like, for example, if I don't want to listen to you, I'm I'm gonna re I'm gonna revert back to my native tongue. Or or if you're trying to exactly, explain yeah. if, if, <laughs> Right. So if you're trying to explain something to me, I'm I'm gonna use that excuse, oh okay, I I know speak English. But bruh, I just heard exactly. you speak good that was English. An issue because so, exactly, and that was an issue because sometimes like I was like she's frustrated about something and she's trying to explain to me what is it that she's trying to say. And she'll start speaking Spanish, and I'm like, well, I don't understand, so I don't know what she's trying to tell me. And she's like, oh, my gosh, how do you say in English like she? She's trying to find a way to talk to me, and I'm just like, you should already how are y'all giving these people to a me. job? And, like, it, that is crazy because it, it goes back to that incident with the guy that got the hundred and something years. Right. That incident, like, that is a big example of, you know, foreigners coming over here and getting into this industry. And you out here are hurting innocent bystanders because most of the time you're not even the one that gets hurt. You end up killing or hurting somebody else. That's so, you know, that incident kind of popped up in my head, you know, the whole time I'm going through this. Cause I'm like, you know, mommy, you, you, you know, you, I understand that she's not getting it, but if I pass you, who life is you going to go out here and take? Mm. And I'm I'm glad that you you know that you're one of those trainers that 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 thinks about that, you know. What what if what if I do pass you and then you go out there and you cause a catastrophe? That that's gonna weigh heavy on my heart because I put you out there, right? Exactly, 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 exactly. Now I'm gonna feel like I'm the blame because I know she wasn't ready because you're so anxious to get out here and make some money. You ain't even gonna get to enjoy the money because now you behind bars. Mm. And then you get all these Facts. people that support you that don't even understand the trucking industry. And they're like, oh, well, if this and this happened, the company should re be responsible for this and that. But they're not understanding that this person should be responsible for learning how to operate this truck. But let me ask you now, let me, let me stop you right there. Should the company take responsibility for bringing, the, uh, bringing that person on, knowing that the language barrier is kind of. It's kind of uh, you know what I'm saying? Because if she's course, if she's course, over here, if she's if she's over here talking to you like, oh, okay, well, I I'm going into my native tongue and I, I don't speak English. Then how did you get the job? You went in there, you filled out the application, which was in English. You talked to somebody, which was in English. They brought you in, which was in English. Now you get in the truck and train. You 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 gonna go back to the I don't know English? The fuck? What's going on here? Yeah. And I was glad that, you know, in the recording that I did, she did admit and say, maybe she, she did say that. I don't understand. Maybe she teach right, but I don't understand. So I was glad that she did admit that she don't understand it because you're not going to make me seem like I'm not doing my job or I'm not doing what I'm supposed right. to do. Like, right. you're, you know, you're, you're not understanding this. And what I didn't like the most about it was the fact that why wait so late knowing that you don't understand? You know, they give these trainees, you know, somebody as a point of contact for anything that's going on in the truck. I don't feel like no trainee should sit here and just be like, okay, I'm going to just, you know, deal with whatever so that I can hurry up and get out to get my own truck. No, you need to go and let them know what's going on because you need to make sure that you know some of these things before you get out here on your own. You're not going to have a spotter. And that's what, you know, I kept trying to, put in her head like you're going to be out here on your own people going to be sleeping at these truck stops ain't nobody get up to help you come back no truck and somebody gonna be mad as hell if they wake up and you don't throw off the whole foot of their truck mm. facts facts all right so of course you had to you had to let her go bye mommy take care hopefully yeah. somebody else <laughs> hopefully somebody else can uh can train you maybe they you know maybe it's a Spanish speaking person, but you had the opportunity to uh to try it again, give it one more shot. And in the video, it looks like it was going good. It looked like two homegirls getting along with each other. <laughs> what happened with that one? It's always like that in the beginning. <laughs> it's I, always like that in the beginning. <laughs> I know, right? What what happened with that one? Well, at, at some point, she kept saying that, you know, she started getting aggravated because she saw that 
you know, she wasn't about to pass. At my company, they say that the students are not supposed to be surprised that they're not passing. They are supposed to be aware of their progress the whole time. So every night I have to complete a form, you know, showing her progress. And we both sign off on it. So, you know, I have constantly been signing off that the back end and, you know, stuff wasn't satisfactory. And, you know, she was okay with it. We both signed off because she also knew that her back end wasn't satisfactory. Uh, so then she started getting aggravated because she felt like she didn't want to keep on driving. She felt like she just needed to do back end, that her driving is not the problem. And she's telling me that, oh, she's not driving tomorrow. I'm driving, and she's driving on Wednesdays and Fridays, and she's telling me what days I'm driving. So I'm like, well, hold on. That's not how that goes. So you're not going to tell me how to run my truck. Okay. So, you know, I was like, if that's the issue, we'll go ahead and call upper management so that we both get clarification you know, on exactly what is supposed to happen. Right. And if you feel like, you know, you don't want to drive, I can ride you back to the terminal. You can take a back and forth if you feel like back and is your only issue that you need help with. And she just took off and went off and, yeah, I'm not driving. You know, I don't drive. I, driving is not my problem. Back in this is that she just went crazy about how much money she spent for school. And, and, and now she come out for training. She's not going to pass. And I'm just like, well, you know, and this, 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 is the second, <laughs> this is the second one. How, how long did, how, how long did that last? Because I know the first one only lasted like a couple of weeks. How, how long did the second one yeah, last? Like a week and a half. My second one, my second one, she actually completed. My second one was actually better than my first one. My second one was amazing. Like she was, she was really good. I had no issues. Oh, okay. So the second one, oh, we were still talking about the first one. Okay, my bad about that one. Okay, so the second one, how how long did she pass? Did she, is she good to go, or what, how how the second one went? Yeah, she was good to go. My second one, she completed her twenty one days. We had no problems. She asked a million questions, which I was happy for. You know, I mean, I wasn't aggravated or agitated by the questions. You know, I was. Grateful to see that it's somebody that's trying to learn, that's asking questions, that want to know this, or that want to know that, and they asking stuff that they need to know. Okay, okay. You know, so the second one, student. so so the second one got India's stamp of approval. <laughs> yeah, she did. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So overall, India. Um, overall, I mean, you, you, you. You did it all. I mean, you was a solo driver. You did team driving. Now you you dipped and dab in yeah, the train, yeah. and you dipped and dab in the training. I mean, you know, you 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 open your experience up a little bit more this year from what from where you came from. Overall, yeah. what, what's your <laughs> overall feeling on training now? Because I know you you mentioned that you say you're not doing it no more. But what's your overall feeling of of training? Uh, yeah, I'm not. I'm, when it comes to training, like, I, that's something. You cannot help the people that you get. I mean, you don't know what you get yourself into. The world is too crazy right now. You in this little bit of space. God forbid you wake up and somebody going to stab you up or something in your seat because they match you ain't passing them. Like, the world is a little too crazy to be in this little bit of space together with a stranger that you don't even know. So that just made me be like, you know what? I Because from the first situation with the first student, I was never mad. You know, all I said was we could call management and, you know, figure out exactly, you know, what it is that required of both of us. And she woke up with a whole attitude and mad about the situation. So, you know, I, I didn't know that she was that mad that the next day we were able to be able to call and it was going to blow out of proportion like that. So, you know, that and right. just realizing, like, the way that training is, I understand that it is a shortage of women trainers, and it is a lot of women that I find for coming to the industry, you know, because of social media, because of TikTok, because of, you know, Instagram, and, you know, the things that they're seeing, you know, on social media has a lot of women being drawn into the industry. But I don't think these companies are um, doing too good with accommodating the women in the industry. And, I mean, you can't really blame the company because, I mean, they have their protocol that they have to follow, you know, uh, state guidelines and stuff like that. But me personally, I just feel like when it comes to training, you know, they kind of put you with whatever's available. They don't really look at what account you get at. 
what account you're getting on. They don't even make sure that you're getting the proper training because the account that I'm on, I run uh, regional. So, you know, the two ladies that I had, they're going OCR. There's a lot of things on my account that I don't do or that I won't be able to teach them because mm-hmm. I don't do it. I don't run mountains. You know, I'm not in snow. It's coming to snow season. I don't train. I'm not able to show you guys some of these things. So you're still not really getting fully trained to be prepared to be out there on that road. Right, because some of the some of the regional accounts you you pretty much do on a on a weekly basis, so you you know where you're gonna exactly. go into. You, I don't have to scale every day. Right. Exactly, I know where to put my tandems, and I'm good. You know, I'm not scaling every day. You're not getting different loads where you get to see you know different type of load and docks and stuff like that. You're not seeing these difficult things out, like, out mm, there like that. You're exactly. not crossing state lines all the time. You're not knowing certain things to do, so I can only tell you certain things. But I'm not really able to show it to you because that's not what's on my account. So I feel like, you know, they should be a little bit more better with placing these trainees with trainers and accommodating the trainers to, you know, whatever account that they're right. going on. Which I understand that, like, if it's a shortage, they, you know, they can't really do that because if you're asking for a female trainer and we don't have any that's OTR, then you got to take what's available. Now, it's it's funny. <laughs> it's, it's funny now that you, you, you mentioned uh what you have went through especially with these two female uh female trainees uh, uh, guys <laughs> the dudes <laughs> won't even train a female but we already know that there, we already know that there's a shortage of female training i mean female trainers and a lot of these females that's coming into the in- industry because of uh, all of the uh, all of the m- mishaps that went on with male trainers, but we see even by your account that female trainers go through issues with female trainees as well. So it's a double entendre. Yeah. What? 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 Uh-huh. What? <laughs> Oh my God, that's just, you, you win some, you lose some. <laughs> so India, yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> so India, you, you, you back to just being your whole, your, your, uh, happy go lucky self back to solo driving and just say, look, money was good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> money was good, everybody, but I, I, I'm, I'm good with my sanity, right? Yeah, yeah, sometimes, you know, money ain't everything, so sometimes you just got to let things go, and that's something that I, <laughs> to me, it's not worth it. That's what's up, that's what's up. You love India as always. She's always a favorite <laughs> of the channel. Uh, listen, um, before I let you go, because I know you're busy, um, how did you, how did you manage through the, uh, through the hurricane? Um, well, I shut down late that night, but I actually did some um, loads over there in that area. And, oh, man, it was crazy. I ran, like, a little bit during the storm when it first started before I got to shut down. And, oh, my God, those winds was high. Oh, my Lord. I was holding on to this steering wheel for dear life. That wind was shaking this truck. Oh, my Lord. When I tell you I was scared, that had to be one of my scariest experiences in truck and, like, that was definitely scary. I'm talking about the trees shaking, branches falling. It was just crazy. And then, you know, after the storm, you know, did hit and everything, I did live with some water loads over there. Right. And um, I was at one of the loves, and I was shut, shutting down over there. And I was wondering, like, why was the love so crowded? And, you know, they had told me that. Somebody had put on Facebook that loves have showers for, you know, people in the community that was, didn't have nowhere to stay or, you know, that was out of power and stuff like that. Right. So they were just, the showers was being shared between the drivers and the people in the community that had lost or, you know, that had been, you know, inconvenienced from the storm. Right. So the shower lines was like three and four hours, but the, mm. the um, the truck stop did accommodate the um, drivers, and they stopped, you know, the shout. They stopped the public access at, like, 8 o'clock. So after 8 o'clock, it was nothing but, you know, truck drivers that were able right. to use the facility and stuff. They closed off the front door and things. But 
I did get to experience and see, you know, some of the people where, you know, talking to people that had lost stuff, you know, that was really sad mm-hmm. and, you know, didn't even know, you know, what's their next move and stuff like that. So it was an experience to, you know, to have calm um, experience. Ooh, man. So let me ask you this. So that, so the, the, the hurricane didn't affect you personally. I mean, you know, like where you lived and everything, right? No, 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 no. It had, no, it had, it turned me, ended up going that way. So I was, I was grateful for that. All right. Being blessed. Well, thank you, India. I'm glad everything was safe and sound for you. And, uh, you were still able to, you know, get things done. Hey, um, yeah. I, I mentioned earlier okay. in the in in the episode that you know you did training, uh, not training, but you did team driving with uh, with Queen Trucker. Have you have you uh, have you yeah, have, you, <laughs> have you heard have have you heard from her lately? Because she been MIA on YouTube for a little minute. Yeah, she's. I, I, I mean, we speak in passing, like on social media. We both connected on um, Instagram. That's my girl right here. So. Um, we have been talking, like, it'll be like, hey, how you doing, or happy birthday, or, you know, you know, just, oh, that's cute, or, you know, just, you know, normal gestures that you, you know, pass through on okay. Instagram and stuff like that. I think she did change her Instagram name, mm-hmm. so maybe that's why she's not as findable, but I don't really know, like, the update on, you know, what's going on, if right. she's still in trust in or anything like that. You know, I never really asked any personal questions or anything like that. Uh, but for the most part, she's okay. She's living. <laughs> All right. That's what's up. Uh, That's what's up. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go in and let you go and get back at it. You love India. Guys, make sure you find You Love India on YouTube. She's one of the, she's still one of the martyrs of YouTube. She hasn't, she hasn't changed over to TikTok. Thank you. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I don't. <laughs> That's a whole nother discussion right there. Oh yeah, we'll we'll get into we'll 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 get into that uh, we'll get into that later. You you don't even have to bring it up. We'll 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 talk about that later, man. But <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but thank you for your uh, for your time and uh, the conversation on uh, on training and your thoughts. Big cheese got it locked. Boy.